Hello SGD, I've been posting a series of uh, videos on Alante Tambo in Peru, uh, especially in regards to lost ancient high technology, they cannot move this, etc, etc. So before I show all the evidence and the actual work that's been done, where the quarries actually are, well, I'll address the question of how much does the heaviest stone actually weigh. Some will point to this other stone which is much smaller and say it's 80 tons but let's look at the actual heaviest block and how much does the heaviest block weigh and it's the one on the right of the wall at the sun temple or great wall as they call it whatever but um so firstly the stones are rhyolite which is very similar to granite but is not actually granite you could use the term granite just loosely but to let's be specific it's rhyolite Rhyolite weighs 2.4 tons per cubic meter. That's the better stuff, and I'll, we'll examine a little bit in the final video because the, the rhyolite here is on a very low quality quality scale. When you look at it close up, you can see all the little air bubbles. It's I'm going to be very, very, very generous with the weight of this block. Anyway, so that's the largest block, and therefore, pardon the typo. I just couldn't be bothered correcting it now that I've done it. Now this is the largest and therefore the heaviest stone on the entire site. The one on the far, where the fella is standing there, the one where he's standing in front of, that's the second heaviest and similar weight to that. But this one where I've got highlighted, absolutely, undoubtedly the largest and heaviest stone at Alante Tambo, without a doubt. Okay, so there's a side view of that same block, just so you get it in a bit... Um, better resolution okay here's another side view of it as well it's not the best resolution but this this photo does show both corners so you get an idea of the width to the depth of it all right so this is a by far the largest stone so let's be again very very generous and say that the fella standing here is six foot high so stack him on top of each other and we're getting to well two and a half so if he's six foot, then the, the block, being generous, is 15 feet or 4.57 meters high, generously. So we can use that scale, and then we can look at the width. Now the block tapers slightly, so if I'd put that, um, the scale at the top, I could have reduced for, uh, the width, but I've put it there at the bottom anyway, and you'll see it's just a little bit over one half of the height. However, those green parts are missing. So if it's 15 feet high, let's just round that all off and say it's half as wide as it is high. So 7.5 feet or 2.28 meters wide. But then we look at the side view, it is wider than it is deep. So the depth of the block um, again, sort of being generous, is seven foot or two point one three meters. Okay, so now that block, undisputably, like anyone who would tell you that there's another uh, block a little bit further down, and will tell you it's eighty tons, and that it's the hip. No, that's just well, that's just ridiculous. But we'll we'll have the quotes. I'll isolate the quotes in the final video, uh, and we'll put up what they actually say. So I had some critics and well, this and that. Well, I'm, in the final video, I'm going to put up the actual quotes of what they say, where they are, are standing, where they say it, and and just end this nonsense once and for all. But so we have basic dimension. Oh, Yep, 4.57 by 2.28 by 2.13 meters. So the volume is 22.19 cubic meters. Rhyolite is 2.4 tons per cubic meter. So being very generous, this block is 53.26 tons. Being very generous. And that coincides with most you know, reasonable people who um, write about this. We'll, we'll have it at about 50 tons. However, it's not that heavy. It's significantly significantly lighter than that. So we look at the top view. So there we can see that block. So on the right hand side, you can see the block where I've got the writing above it, the heaviest stone in the entire site. We'll trace the outline. You can see there's a large portion missing in the back corner where you can't see because you don't need that stone there. So just to highlight it, and there's actually more, the white area is the stone that is missing, and there's more than that. But so let's look 
at the top view, so we're, now we're standing above and behind. Now, I was able to get all of this online. Uh, the top picture there is a, a Google Earth Street view. I have not visited this, this site, not even once. Um, I have not charged people tour money and, you know, and told them all sorts of um, well, wacky things. But anyway, so this is the sort of research that the truth-seeking researchers, the academics and the, and the Smithsonian is covering this all up. We're truths. Everyone else is lying but us. No one does research, but we do. We're truth seekers. Well, they've been there. Um, the time it takes to fly where they've gone there, they should have, have done this in that time. The time it takes for them to do all the administration to collect the money and take good money from people who are genuinely interested, their life savings in some case, they have no problem taking this money from them. They have no problem accusing everyone else of ignorance or cover-ups or you know, all sorts of de deception. So we do the outline. You can see how much of that back corner is missing and then we see the other view. So even that top view, I've adjusted it because of the shadow. It concealed a little bit of the missing part of the stone. So the hard to exact estimate, 25% might be reasonable probably a little bit too high certainly more than 15 percent so 20 percent would be a I'm, I'm comfortable with that could be a little bit this way could be a little bit that way but a good um, round number so 20 percent of this block is missing at the back corner so being very generous the heaviest stone in all of Alante tambo is maximum maximum let's just say 43 tons Here's a picture of you know the olden days. Again, what I find we've lost ancient high technology. I ask a lot of questions about stonework and how did they move this and how did they move that. They'll uh, like deja vu with serapium. They'll add weight to to the block that they want to mystify, and then they'll remove. Um, again, you get constant comments. Well, they could even with modern technology, you can't do this absolute absurdity and I'm not just talking about this block whether it's a um, Ozymandias colossal statue in the Ramesseum whether it's the Baalbek stones any stone on earth that has been moved can be easily moved easily 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 with modern technology a, a single mobile boom crane a type of crane that will arrive in the morning get set up and be gone by lunchtime can move any of these blocks so if that's an, but the old timers did this it, it was you know, barely noteworthy at the time to move stones like this for some reason because we've gone so accustomed to you know being able to you know, see a giant crane pull up and you know and that oh, it's, well, no in the old, the old timers move this type type of stuff all the time just not a problem i just chose this photo i've got a whole video showing the you know the old black and white and the old film of how stonemasons used to work and what they did with the tools that they had on site without giant teams you know they didn't need twenty thousand oxen uh, they didn't need a hundred thousand men or anything like that it was just a few guys who knew what they were doing that was their profession and so for this stone, you would have to remove 30% of it to bring it to um, 42 tons. Without advanced technology, with wood and rope and basic knowledge of knot tying and how levers and how to make a, a really simple compound pulley, just easy, 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 easy done. Just if you don't know how it's done, I look at people who uh, do coding on computers and it's like, this is mystical, it's magical to me. I can't understand it. It seems like a lot of gibberish. Yet they know what they're doing. They get it done. And so, again, this will be a problem. Don't be, firstly, whenever you, you hear a lost ancient high technologist give you a, a number of any kind, be ultra, ultra skeptical. Um, I, I really can't think of a case where they've got it right. Maybe they have a few times, but, uh, you know, even a bloke, broken clock is right some you know twice a day but for the other um 1358 minutes they're wrong and so yeah it, the, the whether it's the serapim or all these other blocks they grossly exaggerate the weight uh they grossly under you know estimate the abilities of of people without 
high tech modern cranes and, and technology uh rollers would crush under the weight that's a nonsense ropes aren't strong enough that's an absolute nonsense that kind of data you can pull up on any technical site because insurance and construction companies need to know what is a tensile strength of uh hemp fiber what is the crushing weight of various timbers when they make buildings so again um rather include this in the in the fuller length video we'll go through where the quarry actually is how the roads are actually connected uh the, the seemingly invisible ramp that actually leads directly to the site it's all there but uh, again just like i did a previous video on the serapium it's it's remarkable how these people whose actual career is to go around and point at stones and say it's impossible we're being covered up the academics aren't aren't talking about this we're being suppressed we're being repressed it's not it is l like a nonsense and if it was just a few mistakes here or there it's not a mistake it's a deliberate pattern which is repeated whether it's in um egypt or baalbek or you name it wherever they, these guys go they feed you a lot of nonsense. Um, they don't tell you, you know, again, they're the ones proposing these types of things and saying, well, how is it done? They should be just looking at the old timer pictures, talking to an old timer, talking to someone who works in lifting and rigging, talking to someone who's a mason, doing a few experiments with copper tools and stone tools to see what the stone cutting rates is. They do none of this, not a single, um, not a single bit. And yet they will demand, well, you must do a, re you must carve and do a replica, and you must do this, and you must do that. Uh, well, I'm going to do it out of fun, and I've got more to come um, in regards to experiments with working with primitive tools and stone. But the the burden of proof is not on on us. The burden of proof is on you to explain how you can get this so consistently, utterly, repeatedly wrong all the time and even when you're offered a correction you do not correct it you put the same uh lies and nonsense and mistruth and just utter stupidity in regards to what a ramp will do and what this will do and then have like this is my expert stonemason um, it's remarkable so again just wrong 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 in every case it's deliberately wrong their business model it's a house of cards and if they admit one thing it's all going to fall down and so, yeah, again, if you ever hear, hear them say anything, just immediately be sceptical because it's, they just get it wrong all, all of the time and they're not the least bit interested in making any correction or, you know, and then they'll divert. Well, it's, the burden of proof is on you. No, no, the burden of proof is on you to explain how, how you can be so consistently um, incompetent that's the charitable term i i'm just i'm i'm of no two minds that they're con men and scammers and uh not at not the least bit interested in truth that's how it works with them i've got to say it so yeah uh, just like with other examples this one's another one where they just got no clue what they're talking about or um they have to be dragged kicking and screaming to get some truth out of these people cheers have a good one